Hello Capricorn. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Capricorn is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And a five of swords, okay. Um, this is about uh, intellectual movement, right? The air is flowing, right? Which is, is a good thing. It doesn't always seem like it, but at least there's communication, okay? I feel like you're somebody who tries to avoid uh, conflict, you know? Um, you have this approach to life where it's kind of uh, not competitive, which is odd, for a Capricorn, right? Because it's you're kind of the stereotype of like the competitor, the one that's just kind of blazing up the mountain, um, like that kind of solitary goat, that devil energy uh, that wants to kind of you know be the first to the top of the hill. Um, and uh, you know, I, I feel like you have that ambition, you have that drive, but it's not in a way that is sort of competitive, and, and, and what I mean is, I don't think you try to keep other people down so that you can rise up. You don't look at everything as a, a challenge with other people. Maybe it's a challenge with yourself. Maybe we're competing with ourselves more than anything, right? Because you, you don't like conflict right now, and maybe this is a kind of a new thing where it's just like, I'm done with all that kind of drama. I just wanna focus on my work, my efforts, my creative process, and getting to the top of my mountain. I don't care if I'm the first one there. I don't care if somebody does it better. This is my work. This is my challenge, you know? Um, so we're kind of in this mode where uh, we don't want to be entangled in, in the drama of other people, okay? And you're the goat. Sometimes you can, not on purpose, but in the course of doing what you need to do, sometimes you can get your horns tangled up in the fence, right? And uh, I think you're really taking a look at that right now and trying to avoid that. You don't want to argue. I don't need to convince you about things. We don't need to fight about it. I just need to do what I need to do. And sometimes it's unavoidable that we run into conflicts. Okay, in the course of everybody trying to do their will and trying to get to the top of their own mountains, sometimes there's a little bit, sometimes we cross paths or we bump into each other, you know. We try to minimize it. So let's see what's going on around you right now where this is kind of the, the central focus is, is not getting so um, entangled in, in the kind of the drama around us. Wow, now this is interesting. We've got, it's a Cancer card. This is the Knight of uh, Cups. Um, the Knight of Cups is all about the giving and receiving of love and affection, okay? And the Knight of Cups is also one of Cancer's superpowers. Um, and I bring that up because obviously, maybe not obviously, but I've mentioned it before. Uh, it, it wasn't obvious to me until I really took a look at things. But Cancer is your opposite sign. If you look at the astrological wheel of the zodiac, you'll see Capricorn and Cancer opposites, right? Um, and I feel that that kind of is about this hidden side of yourself. It's that side of Capricorn that people aren't really aware of. Sometimes I think you're, you aren't aware of it, right? But now this is something that we're trying to really bring forth. And so it could be that there is even a shift from this climbing up the mountain, this driving, you know, devil energy up the hill. Um, there's a transition or there's a shifting of focus from that kind of ambition to uh, giving, to generosity of heart, to uh, affection, to, to love and compassion, and um, that non-competitive kind of energy. You know, it's like you're trying to get out of that 
out of that competitive energy and just like get into the love, you know? Um, especially with this card, I feel like we're not trying to compete. We're just trying to, we're trying to connect. We're trying to build a community. We're trying to maybe, um, and it could really be that you've, you've already done that. You've already done the, the striving up the hill, you know? Um, you've already done that, that major work and maybe you've reached a level of success or at least a, a place where that goat kind of wants to sit down and rest. And you're going to focus on just kind of sp spreading the joy around, you know, focusing on other things, other things that are important to you, other things that have value for you, like friendships, like communication and, and um, compassion and love and affection and strengthening those intimate bonds with people and, and sharing your gift. Maybe you've achieved You've achieved enough in life, right? In a certain or a certain area of your life, perhaps. And now you just want to kind of enjoy it. You want to share it with others and you just, um, but maybe in the process of doing that, there's still those people that are in that competitive mode and they're trying to bring that competitive kind of energy to you and you don't want it, right? It's like, no, I'm just trying to share m myself with you. I'm not doing this to say, hey, look what I did. You, you didn't do it. Ha ha. Right? You're not doing that to show off or to, to try to compete. It's not a competitive gesture for you. It's just a loving, gifting kind of gesture. And so it feels like, um, you know, you're just trying to celebrate and, and enjoy your achievements with the people around you. And some of those people are looking at that as like a competitive, you know, act or a competitive gesture or challenge. Let's keep going with some of this energy. I really, I really like this shift of focus for you into this more, this more kind of, um, I don't know, the more intimate energy, I guess. Let's see what's underneath the surface. Uh, now we've got a knight. <laughs> of course we do. Not a knight. We've got a prince of wands. Uh, this is fixed fire energy. Um, this is that part of you, I think, that you can turn it on if you need to. And it's hard to keep this, this is under the surface, right? This is something that we're trying to kind of contain. And if people push you enough, you can easily return back to that devil energy, right? So I feel like we're, we're trying to bring up that opposite energy, that hidden energy, the, the so-called cancer energy. We're trying to bring that up to the surface now as a way, you know, uh, I think uh, for a spiritual purpose too, for this for the, uh, the advancement of a, a feeling of wholeness or wholesomeness, right? Um, where we're not, we're not trying to just be so one-sided. We're embracing that the other side of ourselves that other people maybe aren't aware of. And so when it comes out, they kind of think this is just Capricorn being competitive, you know? Um, and you can be, again, if you need to be, right? Uh, and and this, is, uh, this is that commitment to... Uh, to what you're doing. This is your ability to take action. You know, this is your ability to to sustain things for the long term. Okay, uh, so I, I feel like you're somebody when you commit yourself to a particular work or a particular um, subject or or you know a vibe, something you're trying to cultivate. I feel like you really stick with it, even though it's difficult with that five of swords. It's just like everywhere you go, you're kind of running into. Um, drama or entanglements or like maybe people trying to draw you into entanglements or drama or assuming that you're bringing that competitive gesture when really it's just I'm just trying to share my gift share share my abundance with everybody else you know um, so it's it's kind of a challenge especially with that five of swords there because the five of swords is is that energy around you that's trying to draw you back into just being, you know, getting right back into the fire. But that's not, that's not your energy right now, right? We've got a lot of court cards now. We've got three court cards. And my rule as a reader is when I get three or more court cards, then it really confirms that, yeah, there's a lot of people around you. Okay, so this is kind of like a, it's a work situation where everybody's vying for the for the promotion. Everybody's vying to like stand out and be the best one and be recognized for their achieve for for their work and get the promotion or the whatever. And you're just here like baking cookies for everybody and bringing cookies for the office. But the other people are like, ah, oh, they brought cookies. Yeah, they're trying to one up me. They're trying to get that. They're trying to like, 
you know, to butter up the boss so that they get the, the accolades or the, the bonus or the promotion or whatever, right? You see what I mean. But it's not like that for you. But it's hard for you to, uh, it's hard for you to express just your generosity and your love and your, your affection and your, you know, um, all that, you know, cardinal water, that cancer energy. It's hard for you to express that without people think that, thinking that there's some other motive. Yeah. Well, we've got the, um, we got the Prince of Pentacles in the past position. And I feel like this, um, the part of the difficulty here is that you have been really this kind of uh, achievement and goal-oriented person for a long time. That people see you as the builder, that you always have these really uh, strong and very, very lofty like career goals or life goals or this kind of creative energy, you know. And, and I see that with the fire and the earth together, right? Because these two kind of represent uh, the Capricorn energy because you're a cardinal earth sign. So you're fire and earth, right? Fire and earth. And they're both princes. So it's kind of like you've been stuck in that fire and earth kind of productive mode for a long time. And now suddenly here we are bringing up our kind of alter ego. And uh, I think it's causing some confusion around you, you know? Uh, let's keep going with the top yeah that's it that's nice look at that that's that's really stunning beautiful sunshine right and uh and the sun really is um we look at the sun and uh we think of the sun in capricorn now, i don't know if you're watching for your sun sign but we can use it as an example um that the sun is kind of, uh, we think of ourselves as, oh, I'm a Cancer. Well, because I'm a solar Cancer, but you're, let's say, a solar Capricorn, because that sun is in the sign of Capricorn, right? But when we look at the sun card, we're reminded that, um, that a full, wholesome, and holistic kind of approach to life is one that recognizes that we are every other sign. We are all of the signs, and then some. Right? This is kind of an, an almost an arbitrary band of constellations around the earth that we have, we have assigned particular um, boundaries to. And, uh, and that's kind of where we get to describe our nature and we figure out who we are in these very specific and very delineated, almost narrow kind of channels. But the sun card here is to remind us that we are, like your Capricorn energy is just one ray of light coming off of your true self. The true self is our, our spiritual consciousness and our kind of earthy consciousness, our human consciousness. And it is every sign of the zodiac. It is every planet. Um, the sun really is the center of that system. And I feel like this is you really trying to live that kind of more, more of a solar perspective, right? We're trying to view reality from the position of the sun rather than from the position of the earth. Right? The position of the sun, we're shining light everywhere. You know, I'm all my everything, everything that I am is shining out in, in every direction. But from our earth perspective, we see the sun and we say, oh, it's over there in Capricorn. Right? So it's very it's just a kind of it's a narrow view. We're uh, we don't want to be pigeonholed anymore. Right? So I think this is a very spiritual process for you. But I think in a practical way, there are people in your life that are expecting you to behave a certain way or to be a certain way. And when you change it up, when you try to do something different, it's like um, you know, someone that spends the majority of their life very practical, not very spiritual or religious or anything. Suddenly they, they start showing an interest in spirituality or religion and they're doing all this, this different thing and their family is like, what's wrong with you? What's going on? You know, why are you suddenly different? You know, and, um, and so I think a lot of us experience that and we end up um, kind of hiding that part of ourselves or suppressing it and just going back to being what everybody expects us to be. But that's not what you're doing. Your sun card here is at the very top. You're trying to, you're trying to activate your full, full being, your true, absolute true self, right? And bring that to the world, right? That is your gift, being a fully realized human being, shining into every constellation. Every part of your, of your astrological makeup is being activated. 
not just those narrow, narrow channels that we tend to look at. Okay, so in that sense, we get the sun card, and I say, well, you should watch every reading I ever do, you know, um, watch watch every video I put out because you're all those signs, you know. And I used to say this to people when they'd ask, well, what what's what reading should I watch, my sun, my moon, or my rising? I said, well, I mean, it's kind of up to you. It, it depends on what you want to focus on, what you want to work on, because we are all of us, everything, you know. And so I do readings for all 12 of the, the, the zodiacal signs. Well, that is kind of, a, again, in a kind of arbitrary way, that composes a complete human being, right? So in your sense, it's that cancer energy. So I'd encourage you to watch the cancer readings at the, at the very least, you know. Um, even if you don't have any planets or aspects, you know, in, in cancer, I think it would be good for you. But you're looking for that holistic life. You're looking to expand who you are. You're expanding the definition of yourself. And I feel that people are, are kind of reacting in a weird way to that. But let's see what the future position holds. The Ace of Cups. Um, so you're going to continue following this path because this is what you feel. This is what is bringing you satisfaction and enlightenment and love and joy and beauty. And if there's some people around that just see it as a competitive gesture, well, eh, heck with them, right? You're in this for that really that, that unified spiritual experience that it can be symbolized by the Ace of Cups, right? And maybe this is really you finding something in life that changes your direction in a way, you know? Now, we've been this sort of this stereotyped, you know, competitive Capricorn. Um, and everybody expects you to kind of be the same way. But maybe you did, like, find religion or find God, goddess deity, or you had a spiritual experience. Or, or it's just a conscious choice that you want to start pursuing these other things. Maybe you've been very left brain, very logical, very serious. You're into law and books and science. And then suddenly one day, you're just art, music, and poetry. And people are like, okay, something's going on with Capricorn, you know. Um, because maybe you, it passed, you've been very consistent in your energy. But now something is really, something is, is prompting you to, to incorporate other aspects of yourself, to explore other aspects of life, you know, of yourself. Um, and I think you're letting your solar light, this solar consciousness, this perspective is shining on what is really meaningful to you. And it could very well be that what was once meaningful to you back in, let's say, your kind of your builder phase isn't so meaningful to you anymore. Now that focus is shifting. All right. Let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is one random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. And we're going to set it here. Alien Simon Mork Ripley right there on top. We're not going to look at that card until the end, but it will tie everything together and give us our confirmation. If you have a prediction, drop it down in the comments. All right. Now we're going to talk about the path of the serpent. And as we do this, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. Uh, and it also helps out the channel. And I am very, very appreciative of that. All right. So path of the serpent, general energy, the empress. Uh, the Empress is, again, it's this kind of love energy. It's the focus on building a life that is more rewarding, more fulfilling, more abundant. And I think really as your general energy, I think you feel already this abundance of just maybe resources, right? Maybe there's physical abundance. But I feel like this is, this is like super abundance. You know, this is a, a wealth of emotion and love and joy and beauty and creativity and art. And, uh, then the, the Knight of Cups wants to share that, wants to experience that in the world and wants to interact with that and, and um, wants to form, you know, more meaningful connections with people, with pets and plants and people and um, expand who we are. So the Empress here really is that kind of that utopia, you know, the real life that you're trying to build, the world that you're trying to build. Yeah. And so I feel like this is kind of, uh, even in a way, it's a return to a more connected way of living. Living in harmony with the world around us, living in harmony with the land. Um, 
I don't know. Sometimes the Empress card refers to a, a mother energy. And I don't know if there's something going on with your mom or grandma or a, a prominent female figure in your life. And that could sort of be the um, one of the prompts for this shift in you. Okay, It could very well be that you're becoming a parent uh, or a grandparent or something like this because you know, we've got the uh, Empress and we've got that Ace, right? Sometimes that Ace is saying, there's a new addition coming to the family. And maybe, uh, maybe this is literal, maybe that there is a new baby uh, on its way. Um, the stork is, is bringing them right now, either to you or to a family member, somebody close to you. But I feel like something like that is going on. And that kind of gave, gave you the impulse to shift your priorities, okay? Something going on there that that is, is leading us to that shift. And maybe the card of the environment will help us out. Oh, there's that lover's energy now. Um, there, there's a, a whole narrative being built here I wasn't uh, expecting. Um, it could be in some ways that we are going from this very business-like builder kind of energy, maybe very career focused, and shifting now to more family focused, more, um, we're not so ambitious in that, that business kind of way or that financial way. Now our ambition, while it's still there, see we saw this fire. Now instead of the fire going that way, we're turning the fire toward something more meaningful. And the lover's card in the position of the environment, well, it could be that you're finding true love. Okay. Um, I can hear the groans. Put your pitchforks away. The lover's card does not always mean romantic love. But this is uh, a commitment to something meaningful. This is a card for me. It's confirming that we've been hit with that arrow of inspiration, that we, we feel it. We're inspired to something. And whatever the past was, I don't even care. I, this is where I'm motivated to bring my energy. And so it could, be, it could be a new child. It could be a new relationship. It could be this new sense of purpose, the finding of a, of a new meaning for, for your life. Okay, and this is the decision, the choice for us to pursue that, unite with that, and make that the, the kind of uh, the central focus for us. Okay, it could very well be that we, um, you know, we're, we're trying to start a family or build a family or focus on family. All right, let's do the card of the obstacle. What is the obstacle here? Well, that's the Knight of Pentacles. That is a Capricorn power card. You gotta ring the bell when we get the power cards. It's your superpower. Your superpower is also your obstacle right now. And we've had that a couple times. I think that was kind of part of the Libra reading that we did. Uh, the Knight of Pentacles is the one that has the vision of the future. You can see the end result of what you're doing. It's kind of a, it's like a presentience. It's kind of a karma in a way. Uh, you have the long-term goal. You, can ha you have the vision of the goal, and that allows you to work your way backwards and figure out, what do I need to do right now to get that goal, right? But if we switch that around, because this is it's in the card of your, the difficulty now, the difficulty for you is to then go the opposite way, to think, this is what I've been doing right now. Where is this leading me? See, we're, we're kind of we're doing it backwards there. Um, what is the end result of the path that I've been on? And so maybe, maybe you have done that. Maybe you're in the, in the process of doing that. Having that extended vision to see what is the long-term effects of what I've been doing now, this path that I'm on, what is the end result of that? What is the long-term you know, prognosis of this path? And maybe that's saying, I don't want that. You know, and so maybe there's this. Sh that's helping us with this shift. That that is contributing. It is acting as a prompt for this shift now toward a focus on something else. Saying, "Well, I better start focusing on enjoying my life or pursuing, you know, depth of meaning, pursuing intimacy, pursuing family, pursuing those strong emotional and and spiritual bonds with people. Start enjoying life in a different way, right?" And so when we make this shift over to this new path, which I think the Ace of Cups is that new path, then your superpower card can look out to the future of this and see if it has the outcome that you want. Well, let's look. 
Well, <laughs> we don't see it, uh, but you will because this is the queen of swords. Now, there's a lot of court cards here, so I feel like there is um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of people around you. This really could be a lot of coworkers. And then you're kind of like, it's almost like you're ditching all those coworkers to focus on all these family members. Or it could be that you kind of are, um, in a way, you're just kind of withdrawing from all these friends that you have to now focusing on just your core family, your core friends even, right? So I feel like there is something like that. But the queen of swords at the end is the confirmation that when you invoke your superpower and you project your consciousness out a month, a year, five, ten years down the road, you will see the outcome of the path that you're on or any other path that you choose to kind of analyze in that way. And this is you getting that perspective. This is that objectivity. This is you rising above kind of what you think you kind of want, rising above the emotions of it, and getting that higher perspective where we can look down on everything, right? We're looking down on everything and we're seeing the way everything's gonna play out. So maybe on this path, maybe this is this had a, a and kind of an end result that you don't you don't wish for anymore. So now you're thinking of this path, you want you're moving toward this path. This is where your heart is kind of taking you. Well, you've got to do that work again. You've got to look at the the long-term uh, you know, projection of this thing. And the queen of Queen of Swords does that in a very objective way. It's, it's almost a confirmation of this sun card. The sun card is that idea of clarity. Rising to the very zenith of the sun's course across the sky where you can see everything across the land. You know, and There are no shadows when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. And that's what you're trying to achieve here in a very practical way. Trying to look at the long-term uh, results of, of what you're doing. So let's look at the mystery card. But I think this is a very... This is a very interesting reading. The mystery card, now, um, if you have a prediction, drop it in the comments. I, um, hmm. I kind of want to see a 10 of something, right? I feel like if we get a, a 10 of pentacles or a 10 of cups, it'll kind of show us like which path you're kind of looking at still. Um, because maybe we see this earth path here is like a different, you know, that's the kind of, that's the career or the business or the, the other goals. And then maybe the water is kind of this, this new, uh, um, the new aspirations, the new path that we're starting to lean into, starting to pursue. And we're still kind of looking at the, the end result, trying to, we're trying to um, change our behavior right now in the present and keep tweaking it until we see the picture that we really like for the end, for the long term, you know? It's kind of like when you're messing with the rabbit ears. You know what rabbit ears are? I'm showing my age again. Um, and you adjust it until you see the picture that's, that you like. At least it's, it, it's, it's not, maybe it's not gonna be perfect, crystal clear, right? Rabbit ears never were. But at least it, you got it good enough where you can see it, you like it, you watch it, you know? And I kind of feel like that's what's going on here. And it's part of the five of swords too, is, is maybe a little bit of internal, you know, questioning about our, what our path is or what our priorities are. I don't know, uh, devil card, right? I think it, maybe it'll be the devil card, your power card. Um, <clears throat> because this is, as much it is, as it is about you kind of uh, evoking that cancer energy, I feel like you don't want to lose the Capricorn energy. We just want to redirect it. See, the Capricorn energy is your driving force. It's your, it's your ambition. It is your eagerness, your drive, your, uh, your, um, your endurance, your stamina, right? We don't want to lose that. We just are redirecting it, shifting the mountain, you know? Um, I don't know. That's my prediction. Let's see. Oh, yeah, look at that. It is the devil card. Bingo. Um, Got to ring the bell again. So, yeah, I think it's important that we acknowledge that, that we're not replacing the Capricorn energy with that Cancer energy. That it's, we've got to do the whole thing. We want all of it, right? We're not trying to squeeze something else out and just replace it with something else. And it's, we're going to have the same problem. So maybe this is, uh, could be an idea of blending that, that kind of previous way of doing things. Um, you know, the, maybe if it's business focus with the family focus, maybe trying to do both. But... I think more than that, it's redirecting the, the devil energy. Because you put any mountain in front of the goat, the goat's going to climb to the top. 
I think what you're doing is you're switching the mountains. Yeah. And so I feel like this is kind of where we're taking our goat, we're taking them down from one mountain and we're putting them in front of a different mountain that now has the outcome that we really, we really feel is calling to us. I think it is a shifting of priorities and, and this is the car that confirms that you've, you've still got to have that ambition. You know, you still got to have this driving force. And of course, if you're on the right mountain, the driving force will be there. This energy will be there. Okay. Very, I don't think I've ever had a reading like this. This is a, this is really a good one. Uh, we're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, there should be a link up top. There's one down below. New readings for Capricorn every Thursday and Sunday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost anything. And leave a comment. Let me know where in the world you're watching from, especially if this is your first time here. I would love to hear from you. All right, uh, we welcome everybody. I'm, I'm happy that you're here. I hope you will stick around and become part of our family. Everybody that um, is, is a regular here, thanks for showing up again. I really do appreciate you. I want you all to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you and we're all in this together.